everyone, I'm Shabhya. Welcome to Yorkpedia. So today we are going to have a good discussion on the previous year questions of your coal exam. So as you all know that your non-technical portion is going to come for a good number that is 100 marks and further it is subdivided into four portions. What are the four components? That is your English, reasoning, numerical ability and the general awareness. Right. So here English is going to come for a good number that is you are going to have 25 questions of it. And I have already discussed the syllabus like what are the important topics of your coal exam in my previous video. In case you have skipped it, you can watch it out. Then coming to the portion like what would be the level of the exam? It is quite you can say say easy to moderate. You won't have very tough questions. They are just going to test your general rules and general awareness regarding the English component. Right. So that is why what are the major topics? How the question is going to come? And what are the level of the exam that very importantly matters when you're preparing for it. So right now I'm going to have a major idea like we are going to cover all the 25 questions from your previous year exam so that even you can have an analyze like well, how you need to prepare it and what are the major components you need to take into consideration. Coming forward to the very first question. Now see very first question is like you need to choose the best word the the word that replaces the highlighted word in a sentence. So quite similar to your synonyms, vocabulary or you can say one word substitution. Now here they are telling us that our teacher has the art of explaining something clearly. Now the teacher explains something clearly to you. So these are the four words you have. Description, argumentation, narration and exposition. Now all these words they are roughly means the same like if you will follow the larger portion describing also means like you are narrating you are uh, explaining the event quite briefly like how it is happening like from the tip to the end how the event has taken place. Argumentation is like applying logics or reasoning about that topic. Narration is like a narrating if you have uh, checked out your novels and all that. So there is one narrator who is narrating the whole story, who is telling us about the, all the major incidents that have taken place in that novel or you can say that story. So that is the narration part and exposition is something where you are highlighting like suppose a person is providing you a summary kind of stuff like what are the major things you need to know, what are the things you need to analyze when you are studying something. So that is called as exposition. Now the question was, you are explaining something clearly. So what is the answer related to it? It would be exposition. Where exposition actually means that I am giving you a summarize, summarizing of all the important categories, all the important events. Right. So here you can also note it down like what are the synonyms of exposition. So synonyms of exposition are like suppose I always tell like in my previous videos also in my life classes also that one tactic is applied by the examiner. They put the questions from the you can say the options part only and that you need to understand. Like you need to understand all the previous year options also when you are practicing the previous year questions just check the options and analyze those options also. In case you are not aware about any word, understand that vocabulary. That would enhance your vocabulary also plus that would be some kind of expected question in your future exam. Right. So what are the synonyms of exposition? That is accounting, analyzing, annotation, article, commenting, commentary, composition, construction, critique or you can say discussion, discourse, details, delineation, dissertation, editorial, all this enunciation. So all these words. So you need to understand first question was when I am trying to explain you something clearly that is termed as exposition. Now some of the terms for your this uh, understanding is uh, eloquence is simply the way you speak, your pronunciation, your fluency in English. So there are some students who just ask like ma'am how to increase the fluency and how to be good you can say be fluent in English. So that is your eloquence and every person has got a different uh, you can say the way of speaking and there's nothing wrong and right because the way we have always spoken the way we our jaws and everything the way we figure it out that is termed as your eloquence. So it is your delivery, it is your diction, it is your expression, facility, wit, voice, passion, fluency, expressiveness. So by this you can note down the some of the important words which I'll be discussing in my entire lesson, right? Next you have is like some of the words which are related to speaking. Suppose any question comes from this category. 
Now see, very first is your whisper. Whisper is something like when I'm speaking something very softly. You are whispering, you play a game like uh, whisper in the ears of someone. So that is termed as whisper. Chant when you are speaking something in a rhythmic manner. Like Gayatri Mantra and all that. When you are speaking those, you are chanting. You are like in a musical tone, you are speaking those. Pray, that is you are just speaking to God. Uh, always you pray in front of the God and all that. So that is your praying part. Cry. So cry can be like while you are speaking and you are crying or you are shouting. So that matters like the way you are crying, the way the depth of your emotions. Explaining is when you are giving details of something. Murmur is when you are speaking very softly, like I am speaking very softly, but every word is unclear. You are not able to understand. That means you are murmuring. Sigh, that is when you take a heavy breath and that is full of disappointment, that is termed as sigh. Narrate, I told you, that is telling a story. Tell is to shout. Elaborate is to explain everything. Elaborated way of explaining something in detail with all the, you can say, important points. Report is when you are explaining something in formal settings. As you know that you have given report, you have written reports in your schools also. Declare, that is you are stating something like there was a declaration, there was uh, some kind of important announcement. Inform is when you are telling something, some, uh, telling someone about something. Stammer is like there are some people who, uh, the words, they are not able to speak clearly. Because of the problem, like the tongue is connected to the lower portion, uh, like they are not properly, you can say, not normal position as there. So that is why they stammer and they are not able to speak clearly. It is basically due to the nervousness also. Inquire is when you are asking something. Mention is like I am bringing some of the topic. Wine is when you are speaking in a very sad voice. So that is termed as wine. Announce is like when I am giving information to public. Roar when I'm shouting with a very aggressive tone. When you fight, you're roaring on each other. Howl, that is when you are crying out in a pain. Like you're howling when someone died and all that. So that are the sounds like shrills and howls. And mumble is same way, mama, when you are speaking very softly, but it is unclear. So these were the general words which you need to be aware, like how the person speaks and what is the pattern of speaking. Coming to the second question, choose the word that means the opposite of the highlighted word. Now, what is the highlighted word? If you are selected, you must comply with the following conditions. So, you need to tell me what is the antonym of falling, right? So, what is there? You have succeeding, proceeding, receding and proceeding. Now, falling means something that comes after it and here the term which is right one is that is your proceeding. Proceeding is what is the introductory part, what is the beginning. So here the opposite of following is the preceding one. So note down the synonyms of proceeding. That is your introductory, previous, prior, foregoing, forward, front, head, lead. Now you might be aware like why I'm giving the synonyms of all these, like all the options. So as I'm saying you, you might get option from one of these in your next exam. So you need to understand what is the mindset of the examiner and how you need to do all these questions. Leading, pioneering, above mentioned, above named, afore known, afore mentioned and afore said. Right. Next you have is your proceeding that is simply you can just note down the term also. Proceeding means coming before something in order of position, previous, former, prior, proceeding and the past. Like starting of the event and all. And opposite of proceeding is what comes later, successional, upcoming, next, subsequential, oncoming, succedent, running, looming, imminent, pending, after, following. So just take a screenshot. How many words you are able to acquire it right now? Just note it down. Other words you can simply have a screenshot and we can practice it. Like you can just read it every day when you are practicing the questions. The third question is like when you are to put the words. There are jumbled words and you are to arrange them correctly in a meaningful sentence. So what is the correct word? That is if you can, can, walk, every, take, a day, a, uh, if. Try, you, should, to you. So that is a jumbled word. And what I suggest to the students is that you need not to practice the jumbled words so much. Why? Because jumbled words come in your category. But the major idea is that it comes the promptness, the context you need to understand. Now I've got four options. 
If you can't try, do should walk, take a walk every day. That is a meaningless sentence. If you can, you should try to take a walk every day. A meaningful sentence. Yeah, so that can be there. If you should, you can try every day to take a walk. If you should take a walk every day, you can try to. So only one is a meaningful sentence and that is the B option. Do not waste your time uh, when you are doing, you can say, understanding a lot, uh, doing a lot of practice in the case of jumble sentences. Why? Because there is no need of it. It would be just on your promptness and context and hardly one or two questions are there. So just don't waste your time in it. My mother will be delighted if I pass the main exam, like if you feel bad, you must go to doctor. So in certain sentences, you need to understand like if gives us some kind of a situation and the opposite comes on the other side, right? Third, fourth question is there, choose a word that roughly means the same. Again, the synonym part. So synonym and tonym, so vocabulary is coming for a good number in your call exam. Students who prepare for their board exam should not neglect the language. So here the word is neglect and you need to tell me the synonym that is the same word, same meaning of neglect. The style, ignore, abandon and fail. So four are the options. So what does it mean is like the style is when you're arranging mathematical option. Ignore is like you are ignoring someone, you do not like someone. Abandon is when you are leaving something, leaving the responsibility of someone that is to abandon. And the last is fail that you already know the person who passes, the person who fails. So here it is neglect. Neglect also means ignore. And here the word would be, option would be B1. Ignoring something, right? So here what are the synonyms of ignore is? Like you are avoiding someone, you are failing, you are forgetting, neglecting, rejecting, omitting, blinking, slight. Wink, brush off, bury one's head in sand, let it go, look the other way, pay no attention to, pay no mind, shut the eyes to, take no notice, tune out, overpass, pass over and the list goes on. So this is what are the synonyms of ignore. Like the person is ignoring someone so that is obviously the person is quite upset with the other one. Next you have is choose a word that roughly means the same as highlighted in the sentence. So it is also coming as the synonym of it. Right? So what is there? The expression yielded priceless treasures from the earliest civilization. So what is the meaning? Like what is the word that gives the same description of priceless? Memorable, priced, cheap or valuable. So here the meaning is the answer is valuable. Something that is very important or you value something a lot. So that is your priceless. So that is something you value a lot. Right? So here the synonym of valuable is antique, commodity, trier, asset, heirloom and the advantage, right? So that is your valuable, priceless. So keep noting down the terms, keep noting down the vocabulary like what is the word and what is the synonym or antonym of it. Next is you are to give spellings. We do not focus much on the spellings while we are learning English but yeah, in all of your exams like maybe it coal, maybe it was HPCL, maybe it is your airport authority. Everywhere you get one or two questions, a good part from these parts or you can say uh, one, two or three questions from the spelling portion. So just focus while you're reading some of the sentences, solving previous year questions. Just remember the options and read out their spellings also. So choose the correct spelling from the option given. Inaugurate, 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 inaugurate. So the way you speak now that matters the most. So here the right option is... C1, I guess, inaugurate, inaugurate. So here inaugurate is I-N-A-U-G-U-R-A-T-E. Like inauguration is a ceremony that when you are like opening ceremony of something, someone opened a showroom, someone opened a, some kind of a restaurant, hotel, whatever it is there. So that is inauguration. Launching, commencing, dedicating, inducting, initiation, commission, bow, set up, open. So they, the way you need to understand, like even it is easy, even it is difficult, you need to note it down. Why? Because that would help you. Practice makes person perfect. So just practice more and more, write more and more. Choose the correct meaning and expression highlighted in the sentence. The so same way you are to tell me the same meaning, right? 
an unknown political tried to whip up the crowd through his speech. And when you're not aware about certain words, certain portion, it's quite a possibility that you're not aware. So you need to understand it through the sentence. An unknown political, a political person was there. He tried to dash what? Through his speech, like crowd. So when you have seen some kind of an IFA awards or any kind of a award function, so the people when they get the award, they generally give some kind of a speech or some kind of the words they speak. So they, the words they arouse in the audience some kind of emotion, like some they start crying, some they start thanking, like uh, and a very beautiful note is there. So that is what they are trying to say is scolded no it won't scold beat up no drive away no it would be stirred emotionally emotionally we are trying to arouse certain things in them right so what is there you have options like whip up agitate arouse ferment inflame instigate work up stir provoke kindle and abat so note down the words like what are the synonyms of whip up and stir emotionally is like I'm arousing some kind of a feelings for you. I'm uh, feeling sympathy for you. I'm feeling pity for you. So that is your stir emotionally. Choose the correct structure to complete the sentence. Dash on his mon. They would have been forced to dismiss him from his service. So what would be there? Now they would have been forced to dismiss from his service. Kunko? Force kiya ja raha tha that the person would be dismissed from his service. Dash he on his won. Agar wo jeetta to. Had he not resigned on his won, they would have forced. Unless he, unless is always when you have some kind of a situation. One is a positive one, other is a negative one. So there is nothing like both are negative, it won't be there. He had resigned on his won. Usne apni won pe, usne apni jeet pe resign kar liya. Aur unko they would have been forced to dismiss. There is no logic like that. He had not resigned on his own. They would. Usne apni jeet par kya kiya? Resign nahi kiya. Or kya kiya? They would have been forced to not dismiss kar diya. That is not possible. Had he not resigned on his own. Shayad usne resign na kiya hota apni jeet par. They would have been forced to dismiss him from the service. Right? So you need to understand the structure. Read all the four options and then you can understand. Right? So here simply you need to understand one more thing. When you are focusing uh, in a sentence, both the portions, like I just tell you one of the rule over here. Suppose you have a sentence, right? So if the sentence is in past, the first form is there, second is there. Both cannot be of the same form. Like one would be the past perfect one, other would be simple past. Other than that, if you are to understand where you need to use simple past, where you need to use first perfect, you need to understand for some kind of a former event. It would be simple past, past perfect and the later event you would use simple past. Like uh, the patient had died when the doctor arrived. So doctor baad mein aaya hoga, patient pehle mar gaya hoga. So jo pehle event ho jata hai, uske liye past perfect. Jo baad mein event hota hai, uske liye kya aata hai aapka? Simple past hota hai. So there are certain rules which you need to understand and that we will be comprehending in our classes. Complete the sentences with the appropriate word. It is claimed that dash in the telecom industry will bring the charges down for people. Now I understand when Jio came like very start. So the Airtel, all the companies like Vodafone, Airtel and whatsoever were the uh, telecom brands were there. So their rates became very reasonable. Why? Because of the increasing competition. So there was so much competition in the market that every, want, every brand wanted ki Jio ko takkar dene ke liye kya karna padega? Apne rates ko kam karna padega. Aur jab Jio ne apne rates ko increase kiya, toh now every rate has come to the level of the sky. Like it's reaching to the level of sky. So what is there that is claimed whenever there is an increase or you can say that in the competition in the telecom industry will bring the charges down for people. Jitna zyada competition hoga, utne zyada charges kya aate hain? Down aate hain. Because everyone wants to stand in the market. Next is, next is question 10, like choose the correct meaning of the expression highlighted in the sentence. The amended law is a watered down version of the earlier law. So watered down means that is of the lower level. So lower is stronger, no, difficult to implement, no, it would be weaker or diluted. So the amended law is a lower version of the, you can say a weaker version of the earlier law.
clear next you have is like choose the correct conjunction to complete the sentence and what do you mean by conjunction conjunction is when you are joining two sentences and the words which you need to use to join two sentences is termed as conjunction so i want to tell you what happened dash you will understand it better i want to tell you what happened but no i won't tell you what happened although you will understand it better no i want to tell you what happened so that you will understand it better because so it would be so that and you need to remember certain things like with although always you will get yet with should you will always get lest with not only you will get the option of you can say but also with in this list goes on like with so you will always get that in some of the options in the positive degree you will get so with the as so these are the certain rules whenever you are completing some kind of a sentence sentence completion is there so you need to revise all these rules okay next is your the question is like you need to understand so that is a conjunction which is to join two clauses and it is purposeful one that is she is too young so that she cannot smoke so some kind of a purpose is there that in that cases we use the conjunction so that although is always used with a yet in most of the cases and it is a subordinate conjunction it is placed at the beginning most of the cases at the beginning though although and mostly when you are contributing like two sentences you are joining one would start with although and at the back you would get yet right so the next one is choose the correct word to fill in the blank mohan lal dash sleep while watching tv last night and i told you whenever you have the word like last night you will simply go for simple past you won't go for past perfect that you need to remember last night last day any kind of like recent event has happened so you will go for simple past had fallen is wrong it's perfect falls is like present indefinite has fallen perfect it would be fell that is simple past one so mohan lal fell asleep while watching tv last night clear so here you need to understand when the have is there have has and had perfect is there when you have started something and it is still continuing in the present like i have started my class and it is still going like it has been going since last 15 minutes and whenever you have like perfect tense since and for are used in it in most of the cases had is when you have started some event a long time ago and it has just completed or you can say just finished right so you need to understand has is for singular one like she has he has and have is for plural one like they have we have and all that okay next is your complete the sentence with the appropriate word tarun's father bought him a motor bike but dash him to ride it safely bike lekar de di usko lekin usko samjhaya gaya hoga na ki dhyan se chalana hai to but please no please kyu karenge wo taught taught hota hai sikhana sikhayenge thodi bike ko safely chalana caution him usko samjhaya gaya help bhi nahi aayega usko caution kiya gaya advice di gayi ki bahut dhyan se chalana otherwise you will hit on the road you will get an accident or something like that so it is but cautioned him to ride it safely next you have is and caution is like you're warning someone you're advising someone prodded prompted and made aware like i'm, I'm making you aware that practice these questions practice more of english and you will be able to succeed in your exam so that is some kind of you can say advice from my side caution would be like you can say please uh, prepare well for your future and all that do not waste your time and all that that is a kind of a caution that is kind of an advice for your future that is a kind of a foresight forewarned choose the correct order of the sentences to form a meaningful paragraph now like jumble sentences only here you are getting some of the options like four options are there and you need to understand like what is the best pattern what is the pattern where they are arranged that makes a sense movies depict cruelty and violence as heroic rather than vicious every day we read and hear about the crimes first it should be like every day we read about the crimes and then it should be like some of the example like from movies the result is that juvenile i think the result is always at the end and in addition many parents often advise so this is not the right format because the right format is when you are giving a general idea then you are giving some kind of an example and then you are summarizing it right 
So you have got four options. So here it is starting with the result. No, it cannot. We cannot start with result. In addition to no, first we need to have a general idea. Every day we read and hear about the crimes committed by younger people. Movie depicts cruelty and violence. So this is an example. In addition, many parents often avoid their responsibilities or are un unable to exercise them. And the result is like fun juvenile has become a major problem in our country. So it is the C option. So whenever you are given such paragraph, such rearrangements are there, always go for some kind of a general idea, then the example and then the result. Okay. And then the conclusion part. Choose the word that means opposite of the highlighted word. It is difficult to find any indicator of humility in that person. So it is like some kind of indicator of humility. So what is humility and all that? It would be submission. No, it would be concern, compassion and pride. So when this humility is, when someone is like, um, I would say you, someone is very sympathy. The person has got empathy for you, right? The person tries to understand the feelings for you. Other would be, it won't be submissive. Submissiveness is like, whatever the person says, I am submitting myself to that person. I'm understanding the cause of that person. So same one, concern is wrong. Compassion is wrong. It is also the same feelings one. Pride is, that is the only negative word over here. So pride is the right one. And that indicates the opposite. Again, the antonym part, right? Next you have is, choose a word that replaces the word highlighted in the sentence. Rahim has a power to see what would or might happen in the future. So it is like one word. Aage kya hoga future mein? Uske paas atni power hai dekhne ki. Imagination, prediction, foresight or some kind of an astrology. So what is the person is doing is astrology is wrong. Imagination is wrong. It would be either prediction or foresight. Prediction bhi hota hai. Kuch tarah ka bolte ho. Some kind of astrology part only. Predict karna. Weather forecast. Prediction is there. But the person has a power. Dekhne ki. Foresight dekhne ki power hai usme. Ki aage hoga kya. So the person has got foresight. Aapko pata chal jata hai. Like the person has got sixth sense. Something bad is going to happen. It is going to be a very beautiful day of my life. Something positive is going to happen. So that is a saying. Start your day with positivity. You will attract the positiveness. Like if you will think like. I can practice all the previous questions. I'll practice new questions. And you start it with positivity. I assure you that you will be able to crack the exam. But if you will start with the negativity, like oh, there's 25 questions and I'm not good in English and all that. So your general idea and you will attract negativity towards you, right? So that is synonyms of insight, foresight is insight, prudence, anticipation, care, carefulness, discrement, circumspection, foreknowledge, forethought, perception. Just have the screenshots. And you can have like you can write it down also like whatever the vocabulary words you are not aware so that you can revise it at the later terms. Choose the correct word to fill in the blanks. The prize money was shared dash all the members dash the football team. When it is divided with between you can say when there are larger people when there are two people we use between more than two we would go for among. So here you have among here and of the football team so that is the right option when you have more than people or you can say more than two you go for among and later you are particularly telling that it is of the football team right so that is option and amongst is like it is used an alternative right so if you simply say among is there is no demonstration difference among and amongst so they are both prepositions only among is also there amongst is also there so among is most commonly used amongst would be rarely to rarely asked in your questions choose the correct spelling accommodate 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 like what is the spelling so you need to remember there is a double c o double m o d a t e so double c and double m and here it is an option number b right a double C O double M O D A T E. So you need to understand. You always speak accommodation. You always see receive, perceive, right? So what is the spelling of receive? You need to remember R E C E I V E. What is the spelling of perceive? P E R C E I V E. I always write these words because they are the ones which are majorly asked. Embarrass E M B A double R A double S pronunciation, all these words, accommodate, you need to understand. And what are the synonyms of accommodate? Contain, entertain, hold, rent, shelter, take in, welcome and boat. Clear? Next you have is, identify the part of the sentence which contains an error from error spotting. India and Sri Lanka have many large number of educated workers than Brazil. Whenever there was a comparison, you go for than. 
between two comparison is there that when you have the words prefer in the sentence and the comparison is there you go for two whenever you have words ending with i u r like she is junior so you will always go for she's junior da, dash sheila so you will go for two sheila okay i prefer milk dash tea so it would be i prefer milk dash tea i prefer milk to tea so these are the words you need to remember that when two is there when two is there otherwise when you are comparing two things always go for than so india and sri lanka have many large number of workers educated so here the option wrong is that has many and large number of so here that is wrong why because you cannot use it together right so large number of is fine the large number and one more thing a rule i need to tell you when you have a sentence starting with the large number or you say the number of a number of okay when you have the sentence starting with the number of there will be plural noun and plural verb but when you have sentence starting with a number of so here it would be at the back or you can say simply i'm telling you for the a number of portion next is your question number 19 identify the part of the sentence which contains an error india and sri lanka have many large number of educated workers than brazil so one more thing you need to remember when you are comparing two things always we will use than but when we are comparing two things and the word prefer is used in a sentence you will use to and not than whenever you have a sentence like i am junior dash sheila so whenever the words which are ending with i o r you will always use to rather than than with hence or you can say uh, with simply with you can say hardly barely and scarcely these words you will always go for when at the back and not then so these are certain rules which you need to remember whenever you see a sentence you will directly take all those questions and all those answers so that you do not waste much of the time so here what is the difference what is the wrong part is that is many large number of that is wrong rest of the sentence is fine because it cannot be used together identify the part of sentence which contains an error again an error spotting one the coin collector was willing to pay a huge sum for the rare coin because it was one kind now here also why i tell you that you need to understand you need to focus on idiom you need to focus on one word substitution here is the problem the coin collector was willing to pay a huge sum for the rare coin because it was one kind no it was one of a kind if it was one of a kind then it would be right so here the difference is the problem is in b option one kind next you have is like a reading comprehension rc is going to come for a good number in this your paper that is for 5 marks so and it is very easy one if you will get an idea let's read it out reading comprehension the postmaster a native of calcutta always underline important words in a very first go took up his duties in the remote village of ulapur he felt very lonely and homesick at times he wrote verses ratan was his only companion so there are two people postmaster and ratan she was an orphan girl she did odd jobs for him he talked to ratan about his mother brother and sister so that the two people ratan and postmaster and they are the two friends that gave him much comfort ratan got very much attached to him first paragraph is clear i guess that there are two people one is ratan another is a postmaster and they used to share some kind of information or you can say share some feelings with each other one day the postmaster fell ill ratan nursed him like his mother afterwards the postmaster applied for a transfer it was rejected so he resigned his job ratan expected him to take her with him the postmaster simply laughed at her idea the laughter haunted her throughout the night now maybe ratan was attached to the postmaster but postmaster might not be that much attached the postmaster promised to ask his successor to take care of her it offended her more ratan burst out weeping and said there was no need for that before his departure he gave her some money she refused to accept it while crossing the river in a boat he felt an impulse to go back and bring the girl it was too late meetings and partings are numberless in human life he consoled himself with this philosophy ratan had no such philosophy to console her she was wandering about the post office with tears in her eyes 
fondly hoping that her postmaster would return. So it's a beautiful one. There is there are two ones, like one is a postmaster, another is Ratan. Ratan is quite attached to the postmaster. She's an orphan girl and uh, she shares her feelings with it. Whenever the postmaster fell sick, she nursed him like a mother, like all the duties and with all the feelings. The postmaster, he applied that he wanted to get a transfer, but his transfer nahi hoi, to what he did is he resigned from his job. Ratan asked her, Ki mujhe bhi saath le jau, but he laughed at an idea. Later, when he had left it out, so what he did was, like he felt like I should have taken that girl back, but the time now there was no other option. So he felt like we meet a lot of people in our life and he consoled himself. But Ratan had the same feeling and she was feeling very bad for that. Now, what are the questions? Which of the following did not give comfort to the postmaster when he felt from homesick? He talked to Ratan about his family. He wrote verses at time. Ratan nursed him like his mother when he was ill. And when Ratan asked him to take her with him, he laughed at the idea. So, did not give comfort to the postmaster. So, it might be the D option. And that is your laughed at the idea. Because that is the only idea where the postmaster that it, he did not felt some kind of you can say. Where he did not felt homesick. Like he did not give comfort. Wo comfort nahi de tha because he was laughing when she asked him ki please mujhe saath mein le jau. To uske par kya kira tha? Uske par hasra raha tha. Next question is, what did you infer about Ratan from her words? She fondly hoping that postmaster would return. She was hoping that he would return. Ratan was very much attached to the postmaster. The postmaster treated Ratan only as a servant. The postmaster did not like Ratan, so he left her. The postmaster did not at all want at all want to take Ratan with him. So it is A option that she was very much attached to the postmaster. That is why she was still voting that the postmaster might return and he might take her along. Next is, what is the theme of the passage? We should not take care for the people who help us. We meet so many people in our lives and we cannot remember all of them. Human relationships have no monetary value and we should appreciate those who help us in life. Now remember that when he left, he told his successor that uh, and tried to give some money to Ratan. But she rejected it because she wanted him with him, not the money or not any kind of monetary value she wanted to attach with the relations. So it is a C option. Human relationships have no monetary value because we have the love for each other. We do not go for the money. Choose the best option that expresses the tone of the passage. So it is very casual, serious, sentimental or dismissive. So it is very emotional one, very feeling one, full of feelings. So it is quite sentimental. What are the options? You can say synonyms. Affectionate, corny, dreamy, idealistic, modern, mushy, nostalgic. We are just thinking about your past. Saccharine, sappy, gushing, weepy, touching, tender, sweet and silly. So that is full of emotions and loving. At times he wrote verses, the phrase at times means rarely, sometimes, always and often. So whenever he is writing that he was, uh, you can say at times he used to do it, he sometimes wrote some kind of verses. Like he used to write whenever he used to get some time. So other ways to say sometimes is at times, now and then, every so often, off and on, once in a while, occasionally you are a cousin from time to time. So in this way, we have covered all the previous year questions which are going to come in your call exam and here it ends and I want you to revise, make the notes of all these questions and do practice more and more. But when we have got some kind of, you can say, uh, the module for non-technical, you can even indulge in it. You can attend my live classes where I do teach the rules and all that so that we together could crack the exam. Okay, take care, have a nice day, keep preparing and do not worry, be relaxed. Bye-bye.